Meet Brian. He is a 28-year-old lawyer working at a well-known law firm. He has an active social life and has had no personal or family history of health issues. One morning, however, as he's driving to work, he starts to get a strange feeling. He's not sure why, but he suddenly becomes very anxious, sweating excessively and experiencing extreme fear and terror. As his symptoms get more extreme, he starts to experience shortness of breath and chest pain. What Brian just experienced is referred to as a panic attack. A panic attack is a sudden episode of anxiety and fear accompanied by a number of physical symptoms. Although Brian experienced the view, there are numerous symptoms associated with panic attacks. Some of the most prevalent include palpitations, heart pounding, shaking, dizziness, lightheadedness, numbness, and in extreme cases, a feeling of detachment from reality. A panic attack is characterized by the onset of four or more of these symptoms. Now, why does a panic attack happen? In order to better understand how an attack happens, we must first look at a crucial defense mechanism of the body, called the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response is the body's normal response to danger. Once the body detects a source of danger, signals will be sent to the fear center of the brain, also referred to as the amygdala. The amygdala is largely responsible for the processing of emotions, but its function in regulating the sense of fear is crucial for the initiation of the fight or flight response. After processing, the amygdala will send danger signals towards specific parts of our nervous system. These signals cause the body to produce various chemicals referred to as hormones, which act as messengers and lead to further changes in the body. The main hormone involved in this step of the fight or flight response is adrenaline. Upon secretion, adrenaline affects different organs, leading to an increase in heart rate and breathing frequency. Once heart rate increases, more blood is pumped into the muscles of legs and arms to better prepare the body for facing the danger. In addition, an increase in breathing rate leads to more blood and oxygen being sent to the brain. As a result, the individual would become more mentally focused and aware of their surroundings. Imagine how pressing on the gas pedal makes the car move faster by sending more gas into the engine. Once the danger is removed and the body feels safe, it will need to return to its normal conditions. Now we enter the rest and digest part of the mechanism. Signals from the nervous system will lead to the release of another chemical called acetylcholine, which is mainly responsible for returning the body to its normal conditions by lowering the heart rate. Similar to how pressing the brakes would lower the speed of a car. As you can see, there is a great deal of balance taking place during the fight or flight response and any form of disturbance in this balance can act as a possible cause of a panic attack. In some cases, the amygdala might become overreactive and trigger the response even if there is no real danger. In other cases, the nervous system might become unable to fully return the body to its normal conditions once a response is triggered. The likelihood in occurrence of a panic attack might be impacted by a number of underlying causes, including genetics, major stress, medication withdrawal, excessive caffeine intake and smoking, as well as a number of mental disorders such as obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, and social anxiety disorder. Now that we have established what a panic attack is and how it can be triggered, we need to take a look at another important concept known as panic disorder. Many individuals might only experience a single panic attack throughout their lifetime. Others on the other hand might experience frequent panic attacks, causing them to live in constant worry of a recurring panic attack. In some cases, this feeling of constant worrying and anxiety can cause the individual to make changes in their behavior in order to avoid any situations that could possibly trigger another panic attack. A combination of all of these symptoms leads to the diagnosis of panic disorder. About 4% of Canadians and 4.7% of adults in the US will experience panic disorder in their lifetime. It is important to highlight that not everyone who experiences a panic attack necessarily has a panic disorder and the diagnosis of panic disorder must be done by a healthcare professional. One factor that makes the diagnosis difficult is that many of the symptoms associated with panic disorder and panic attacks can also be caused or mimicked by a number of other factors. These can include conditions such as heart diseases or thyroid problems, as well as a number of external factors such as the use of alcohol, marijuana, amphetamines, and hallucinogens. The diagnosis of panic disorder is done using a preset criteria referred to as the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM-5. 
The criteria has been set by the American Psychiatric Association and is widely used in the US for the diagnosis of mental disorders. DSM-5 classifies panic disorder as a type of anxiety disorder, which includes recurrent and frequent panic attacks. Furthermore, DSM-5 highlights that in order to be diagnosed with panic disorder, the individual must have experienced at least one panic attack followed by a minimum of a month of worrying about recurring panic attacks, with the worrying often leading to behavioral changes as well. It is worth noting that according to research findings, women have a higher risk of developing anxiety disorder. As a result, scientists recommend that women and girls who are age 13 or older should be screened for these conditions more frequently. Now that we have learned how panic disorder can be diagnosed, let's talk about how it can be treated. Doctors are currently using two methods of intervention in order to treat panic disorder. These include the use of medications and psychotherapy. As far as medication goes, a number of antidepressant drugs are currently being used including selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs, serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors or SNRIs, as well as benzodiazepines. For psychotherapy, the form of treatment that is currently being used is called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy or CBT, which aims to provide the patients with tools to exert physical and mental control over their negative thoughts and emotions. At the end of the video, it is crucial to highlight that panic attacks and panic disorder are serious mental health conditions that can lead to varying symptoms in different individuals. If you or someone close to you are experiencing similar symptoms, please refer to your healthcare professional in order to get a full checkup and diagnosis. Lastly, if you'd like to learn more about these conditions, please refer to the sources provided below.